Cook. To prepare food by the use of heat as by boiling, baking, or roasting. So to cook is to prepare food by heat, but just how hot? You know what? A thermometer will tell you how. Today we're going to help you navigate your way through the world of thermometers. I'm Derek Allen and this is Burnt Fat. Have you ever cooked something, put it on a plate and served it just to discover that it's not quite done yet? I have, embarrassing, I don't ever wanna do that again. And you know for most dishes, doneness is really just a function of temperature. Now yes, there are other indicators, but none as reliable as temperature. For example, color. Color can vary depending on how fresh the product is or if there's any additives in the product. Another one is firmness. The recipe tells me to cook until firm. Well, what if my idea of firm is quite different from theirs? You know, time even has other factors involved. Say the recipe says to cook in the oven for 30 to 35 minutes, but my oven is running 10 degrees cooler than it should and I don't know about that, it's gonna take me 40 to 45 to 50 minutes. Juices run clear, what if I'm colorblind? At the end of the day, we all wanna maintain consistency when cooking and the best and most reliable way to do that is to use a thermometer. Now, when we're talking about doneness, there's three major considerations to keep in mind. First up, safety. You always wanna cook it long enough and to the proper temperature to be sure that you kill any bacteria and eliminate any threat of foodborne illness in your food. Second is preference. A great example of this is say a beef roast. Say the, the recipe tells me to cook it to 165 degrees. Well, that's gonna be a pretty well done beef roast. I like mine medium rare, so I'm gonna take that into consideration. And third, carry over, cook, carry over cooking. Whenever you take it out of the oven or off the stove or something, something like that, it's got a lot of residual heat inside and it's going to keep cooking for at least a few more minutes. So always keep that in mind also. You know, there's a lot of thermometers out there to choose from, but we found four to be the most useful in our kitchen. Instant read thermometer, thermocouple digital thermometer, candy thermometer, and oven thermometer. First up we have the quick read thermometer. Now this one obviously you're gonna to use to take the temperature of food, but you can also use this one in some cooking mediums. Perfect example, poaching liquid. If you're gonna be doing poached eggs, stick this in the water real quick, see if you're at poaching temperature or not. Now speaking of pros and cons, one of the big pros of the quick read thermometer is it's cheap. You can get this thing for like five or six dollars and it's quite reliable, especially for the price. So cost wise, big, big pro. Also it's extremely versatile and you can take it anywhere. I mean, it's tiny, stick it in your pocket, take it wherever you wanna go. Big con though is you can't leave this in the food. So it's really just meant to be a quick read thermometer. So you stick it in, you take the temperature and take it out. So you can't leave it in the oven, you can't leave it on the stove top. Speaking of placement, um, perfect example right here, we've got a roast chicken. What you're gonna do is just find the thickest area of meat here in the breast back here. I'm gonna stick it in. I'm gonna stick it as far as I can without touching bone. You do not want it to touch the bone. It's gonna alter the temperature too much. You stick it in as far as you can, take the temperature. Great thing with these, you're gonna get it in less than a minute. Find out if you're done or not. Second, we have the uh, digital thermometer, sometimes known as a thermocouple. Uh, this one is typically gonna be in two pieces. You're gonna have the display unit, and you're also gonna have the probe. Um, if you have one of those newfangled ovens, this might actually be built in, and you're just gonna have this piece right here to stick into the food and then plug in. Now, um, as far as uses, really just the same as your quick read thermometer. You can use this in food and in certain cooking mediums. As far as pros and cons, the big, big pro to this one is you can actually leave this in the oven or on the stovetop without any worry. Con though, it does tend to be a bit more expensive. It tends to run between about like $25 to $50, depending on how fancy you get. Um, as far as placement, all you need to do, just again, like the quick read thermometer, stick it into the thickest part of your roast, right here again with the roast chicken, we're gonna stick it into the breast. Again, do not wanna touch the bone. Make sure the placement's just right, and then you're just gonna stick this part into the oven, set this part on the counter, and you can keep track of the temperature while it's cooking. Third, we have the candy thermometer, and this is aptly named because traditionally this is used for candy work or sugar work, but nowadays it's even more versatile because we can use this with oils, when you're cooking with oils for like shallow frying or deep frying. Now let's talk about the pros and cons of this one. Pro, the temperature range. It's got a very wide temperature range from 100 degrees Fahrenheit to 400 degrees Fahrenheit, but 
On the flip side, you have the con. Very limited in its use. You can't take this and stick it into a chicken to see if it's done. Last thing I want to point out with this one, they usually come with this clip on the back. All you do, you take that, you clip it to the side of your pot, and you're good to go. Fourth, we have the oven thermometer. Now this one is exclusively for the cooking medium. This is not for food. Basically, this is just a great way for you to keep your oven honest, especially if you have an older oven. It might not be running according to the temperature you set it at, but sometimes, you know what, those newer ovens go on the fritz too. So this is just a great way for you to keep your oven honest. If you're turning your oven to 350, stick this in there and it'll let you know if you're actually at 350. Okay, a couple other considerations when talking about thermometers. First up, temperature range. Now you wanna be sure that the thermometer that you choose to use can actually handle the temperature range of what you'll be cooking. And second, calibration. Calibration is your opportunity to keep your thermometer honest. So if your thermometer is reading 160, you wanna be sure that the food is actually at 160. And you know what, actually when you go to purchase thermometers, some will give you the option of actually being able to calibrate them at home. This is a benefit, and when it comes to that, just follow the manufacturer's instructions. While there's tons of kitchen gadgets out there, you're gonna find that thermometers are one of the most important kitchen tools to have. In fact, they're invaluable when it comes to safe and consistent cooking. We don't want any raw chickens on the table, right? <laughs> All right, folks, um, as always, enjoy your time in the kitchen, experiment, have fun. I'm Derek Allen and this is Burnt Fat. One of the major pros about the quick weed thermometer is, I keep saying weed. Is that coming across? That's how you can tell, uh, sorry. Now, speaking of pros and cons with a quick read, I see, it's yeah. right there. Quick read, quick read. You wanna be sure that the temperature... <laughs> All right, folks, as always, blah, 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 blah. As far as... <laughs>